it should start saying recording here in a little bit on your screen. It does. It does? Mm -hmm. So we're recording? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. So here we go. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Seth Ponder, and I teach Project Lead the Way at South Bend Riley High School. And I found four. Okay. I think now we're recording. Now it says recording on my end. Does it say recording on your end? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess we'll get started again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Seth Ponder, and uh, you are watching or listening to the PonderCast EDU podcast. Um, I have teach Project Lead the Way at Riley High School and just get really nerdy about all this technology that we're sharing all over in education. I found four awesome teachers that are called DISSES. District Integration Specialist here in South Bend. That's um, still not right. No, yeah. it's Digital Integration <laughs> Specialist. <laughs> right. They're really like ed tech coaches. They're really like pedagogy coaches. They're really like the all-stars. And especially right now in this e-learning time that we're seeing. So I'm going to introduce Holly, Ter Tara, Allison, and Meg. And... I'll let them introduce themselves and tell us where they're at and what they're doing. So we'll start with Meg. Uh, my name is Megan Damrell. I'm the DIS at Dickinson. Um, I have been teaching for 17 years. Um, I spent 15 years in a seventh grade classroom um, and I taught um, reading, social studies, um, but spent the bulk of my time teaching seventh grade math. And now the past two years, I have been um, a digital integration specialist. All right. And Holly, you're up next. All right. Um, my name is Holly Swartz. I'm the digital integration specialist at Kennedy Academy. I've taught 22 years, um, ranging from sixth grade, kindergarten, first, second, third, you name it in elementary, I've probably been there. And um, I've done two years now as a digital integration specialist. Nice. All right, Tara. I'm Tara Cowell. I'm the digital integration specialist at John Adams High School. I've been teaching for uh, about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, in the secondary level, I taught Spanish, took a brief hiatus and went into higher ed and came back and am now for the past two years been a digital integration specialist. And last but not least. I'm Allison Schlothel. I'm the digital integration specialist at Riley. Um, I live a floor above Seth, um, at school, at school, uh, at school. Yeah. <laughs> Not right now. Um, I have been a, in education for seven years. I was an English and ESL teacher for grades nine through 12 before, um, at East Noble high school in Kendallville, Indiana. And I moved back to my hometown two years ago to South Bend to be a digital integration specialist. There we go. And so a lot of us are teachers, a lot of us are parents. So we're seeing all of this e-learning on multiple sides. So let's just talk about this distance learning. So we're right in the middle of the coronavirus. I hope we're in the middle of it. We've been home for, this is like day 85, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's just day five. Maybe yeah. just for parents, it feels like day 85. Yeah. Okay. It's not looking great. So yeah, we pulled out the wig. <laughs> I, I will I, tell you I guys a hat every single day <laughs> right i actually showered for you guys so that's okay. a first and but my barber is closed so i've just been wearing a hat for a week or so yes i haven't seen the roots of my colored bangs in probably six seven years so yeah <laughs> <laughs> the berries and color them <laughs> All right. So let's let's talk about some uh, e-learning experiences. What are you guys seeing that's going well? I, if, I think for me, the thing I think is going well is I feel like um, this has almost kind of been like a community building thing because yeah. everybody has had to kind of all of a sudden, no matter where they were, or what their feelings were before all this happened, everybody has kind of had to been all hands on deck and is recognizing that if we are not all in this together, then it's all going to fall apart. And I think everybody just wants to do what is best for our students right now. I think more people are concerned about the kids that we don't see um, in these situations. So I think it's been a, almost like a really good, like almost like a bonding experience. 
Yeah. Um, and I think that's been really amazing to be a part of. Yeah, I agree. And I, um, one thing that I really have enjoyed is watching my teachers try new things, um, mm -hmm. whether they fail forward or have a great success first time around. It has been fantastic, but it connects with what Meg said because the kids that they aren't seeing, they're like trying to use Google Voice in order to call them or different routes to try and get a hold of them in whatever way is possible just to check in. It's not even like, hey, don't forget to do your homework or don't forget to do your e-learning. It's just like, are you okay? What is going on? How can I help you? Yeah. Um, I've had a bunch of teachers do like Google Meets like this and they're like, I did it to do a Q&A, but we ended up talking for 45 minutes just about life. Yeah. and like spent 15 minutes on content, but they're perfectly okay with it because it is community building, like Meg said. Yep. I think the admin and support staff especially have really been taking a strong role. Um, you know, we've already devised up ways to best communicate with students and reach out. So it's not just falling on like the shoulders of that teacher. Mm -hmm. And just really um, a lot of people coming and saying, what can I do and how can I help? And that normally wouldn't have time to maybe do those things that they really want to do. So that's been really great to see, even on the back side of it, everyone coming together, not just the teachers. It's hard to follow that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Community yeah. building, yes. <laughs> you know, the companies and all that online that are, are jumping in, um, local celebrities, we've had expert meets. Mm -hmm. They come and talk to the kids. Um, you know, having the teachers push beyond their their norms. Um, in the elementary, we're doing a lot of, uh, well, I'm working at a lot of Google Meets with the kids, either in small groups or large groups. Um, you know, seeing the kids take one step forward and maybe become leaders. Um, I have a small tech group that's starting to make how-to videos to push out to parents and students on how to do certain things that are going on. So, and then admin, admin has been backing us, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. I agree with all those things. Um, what are some suggestions that you guys can think of to improve um, for parents and for teachers? I, I think making sure your contact information is up to date. That would be really helpful. <laughs> making sure you have an email on file. Like, I mean, I know that seems silly, but like, some of that stuff, I think, like right now, realizing that we are trying to contact some of these parents and the certain things aren't getting through. But like, I think that seems a little, but it is so important because, you know, we are trying to get in touch and contact. But um, uh, that was just, you know. <laughs> no, actually, I had that exact um, exact example today. Like I tried calling a kid today. Mm -hmm. Phone number wasn't working like um not on file and it was just like oh man I, I have his chromebook like we have it at school i just want to give it to him and yeah. i'm not sure that he can check email and that's yeah. exactly um yeah. since i'm not a parent uh and if you are watching from riley you have heard me say this a thousand times over the past week um but my biggest tip is to have grace during this time yeah. like you have to be flexible and have grace towards not only yourself not only the parents that are going through this, but our kids too. Like um, Matt Modlin, actually, I'm going to quote him real quick. He just told me like, oh, within the course of a weekend, we threw all of our teachers back into being a first year teacher. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Nothing. Like we are brand new to this. And not only like are our students navigating e-learning, navigating what's going on in the world, navigating babysitting their family members and sharing devices. Like we have no idea. So we just have to be super graceful and remember that like they may not know the highest depth of knowledge in our content by the end of this, but if they know that we support them and we're trying to get a nugget of gold into their brain, like we're set, we're golden. Yeah, and to kind of like jump off of what Allison was saying, because I completely agree, I think that, you know, focusing on what's the most important right now mm -hmm. and taking a step back from all those standards that teachers, you know, I mean, we're bombarded with, but saying, how is it? And what's the most important? Like, how am I going to get there for these kids? And, you know, yeah. being flexible and being like Allison said, you know, doing everything with grace, but mindful that maybe not everything is going to be accomplished right now. And it may not look like what you planned it to look like. Yeah, I think too, a lot of our, um, some of my teachers were saying, you know, it is kind of stressful being at home and, you know, they've got multiple kids and, you know, they have a spouse or maybe they have, you know, 
their parents living in the home with them too. And it's so many, like trying to get stuff done. I think just recognizing that even as the teacher in the situation, it is okay for you to say, you know what, I need to take 30 minutes and to myself, I need to take 30 minutes to go for a walk or just sit outside or, you know, watch an episode of whatever your favorite thing is on Netflix and just have that time and be able to have that grace to say, this is what I need to be able to move forward with the rest of my day. And but I also, I'm also finding like with the elementary students because they're not very independent on their own. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed with the grace and the flexibility of the teachers. So they're, you know, logging in later than the hours are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've answered questions all the way up to 10 o'clock at night because that's when mom and dad are home. Yeah. And so that's when they can get on these, these um, devices and that. So, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that our, our staff is willing to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, to kind of jump off what Meg just said, I was thinking about the things that sometimes we take for granted at school, like the 30 minutes duty free lunch and the, yeah. the prep period. Yeah. I was like sitting there in the kitchen making lunch thinking, yeah, I need my own 30 minutes to yeah. like, like yeah, after to the boys I went to bed last night, I went for a walk and I was just like, oh my gosh, like I need to do this earlier in the day instead of 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, I have a side question. Do you feel like you've become a short order cook at home <laughs> for lunch? I feel like I've become a short order cook at lunch. My kids are like, you know, normally it's like we pack our lunches, but now it's like, um, can I get some sweet potato fries and a grilled cheese and a bowl of tomato soup? And I'm like, um, okay. Sure, <laughs> that, I guess. Yeah. Hey, when I'm back to school, I'm gonna put in my order for you to send. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you know, like now, like that's like another, like another role that I can. You know, they say we're supposed to be like keeping to our schedule. Maybe you just make them lunch. Yeah, just make a lunch schedule. Oh, so I thought about that. I thought about that today when you know, because now I'm realizing today I was like, well, I wonder what they're gonna want. Do I need to turn the oven on? <laughs> going to take like 15 minutes to warm up. So, you know, I'm trying to be prepared. And then I finally, I was like, man, I should just pack it and be like, get your lunch out of the fridge. <laughs> Cause this is, this is a lot. Yeah. I, I am. I am also finding that my youngest is taking his sweet time eating breakfast to delay <laughs> a little bit of the e-learning, which yeah. doesn't surprise, I'm sure any of you guys, but That's my boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have, I said that a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, another one of the suggestions that actually I'm learning from my own kids as teachers is like keeping everything um, like on the same Google drive and keeping it. And I call this like as frictionless as possible. So just like Amazon and when they like their whole website is built for you not to leave their website. And so making Google Slides or a Google Doc or whatever you're using um, to just make that just streamlined so the students stay focused, stay on it, and go through each part of the agenda or each assignment. Um, I'm finding like some of my kids that are in the elementary schools, man, like their teachers have just awesome Google Slides that mm -hmm. the kids don't even have to leave. Or if they, mm -hmm. it, it's like a, a daily Google Slide and they, have answers that they just add into the Google slide. Um, so it's pretty easy, I think, for the teachers to grade, but also it's easy for the kids to navigate. Yeah, the less clicking, the better. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think that was one thing that was really pretty, like in the guidance that we have for South Bend schools, you know, it says to limit the new tech that you're doing. You know, this is not the time to be the tech superstar. <laughs> it's about, you know, sticking with those tools that your kids know and trying to make it as routine and normal as possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was helping a teacher today um, think about new ways to use Flipgrid because she's already was using Flipgrid and versus bringing in like another platform. So, you know, I think that that's something that the teachers are really trying to be conscious of, you know, that they're not bringing in a whole bunch of new tech tools. <laughs> I'll also suggest jumping off of that is think about the tools that the kids are using. Mm -hmm. So in my design class, um, we're continuing a project that we started before we went on this hiatus. But I told the kids like, OK, we can't use the software that we use in class. So you can use the software that that you're comfortable with, whether it's a paper and pencil and then take a picture of your drawing or whether it's Minecraft. 
And the stuff that I'm grading today is so cool because it's on Minecraft and they've like, I don't know, how, it looks like they've spent hours on it. I mean, it, for me, it would have taken forever to do what they're doing because I've never played it, but it is really cool. And so like, think about in court, incorporating those things that the kids are using like Minecraft, like, um, like Snapchat and, and Instagram and like encouraging to use those filters. Maybe don't like join Instagram and Snapchat to be with your students, but like <laughs> encourage them to use those kind of filters and things like that. So we have a teacher at Riley who um, asked her students to like do a science experiment at home. Um, that was an option. You could obviously take the baking soda and the vinegar and see what happens, or you could research what it does if you didn't have the materials at home. But one of her students submitted to her a Snapchat file and she was like, what in the world? Like this says Snapchat on it, but that's the student used that to video record because it was the easiest for actually his little sister who was recording him. Um, so that was fun. And then I also saw on TikTok, a teacher is using TikTok to do her lessons. So she like creates content, like how to count by sevens or whatever through TikTok. And it, oh my gosh, it's crazy. It's so funny to watch, but it's awesome. Yeah, this is gonna prove what <laughs> apps are like are cool, but then like teachers and parents are gonna start using these apps like They're TikTok. They're immediately gonna become uncool. Yeah, I'm yeah. okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that one. <laughs> All right. Um, what has been some like tech that uh, that you've shared with your staff that you think they're doing great at? Google Meets. Google Meets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For most of them, they have never hosted a meeting, like a virtual meeting before, mm -hmm. um, or even participated in one. So to all of a sudden have teachers that maybe were tech resistant holding a virtual meeting with students is huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I also think it, um, since we see it on the news and stuff a lot right now with like everybody using these virtual calls, it kind of gives teachers like that sense of being a professional um, because they're seeing the entire world is doing these kind of things and these kind of meetings and you see all the bloopers from them and stuff, but everybody in the world is doing this now. It's not just professionals, so. I've always had two teachers um, when it comes to, I think also just recording videos yeah, like instructional videos has been huge, too. Um, and I've always in you know the past two years when um, we've talked about Screencastify and different ways to use it, the teachers have always said, well, I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to be on camera. And I think this is kind of like the get over it moment. Right. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Get on camera. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think it's I think some of that has been really good because they're realizing maybe it's not as scary as I thought. Well, I think Google Meet for the little kids is good for just the social interaction. Like, you know, we built in to most of ours where they have a time to just talk to their friends. Mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. A little chaotic, but then we pull it all back together. But I think they just need that time. Yeah, I saw someone was doing, um, one of my Fort Wayne friends, uh, her little was doing a dance party with his class. Yeah. And it was just like built in that they just danced around and they watched each other dance and they watched each other. Like it was so funny, but that's what they need. Yeah. My other one is Flipgrid. Um, I think like Seth knows, like our kids were so iffy about Flip Flipgrid at first, um, but our PE teachers are using it to get our kids up and moving. So our kids have to record themselves on Flipgrid doing push-ups or sit-ups or playing basketball or whatever. And I think it's helped a lot. Um, and they like putting the emojis over their faces and things like that. Uh, but it's been cool to watch our PE teachers get into the tech and watch our kids play basketball and do sit-ups and stuff. Your cross-country coach is just doing Flipgrid? Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Our swim coach, our cross country coach, and our baseball coach are using Flipgrid. I'm impressed. They're doing. They're doing it. I I have a Flipgrid coming out. I think tomorrow, and it's going to be like identify that tool. So the kids don't know this yet, but there's going to be like it's going to be a two parter. The first is just guessing what the tool is. So they have to find a tool like in their house, and like it can be a kitchen tool, or like something from you know, the workshop or the garage or something mm -hmm. and see, try to explain it, what it does. And then part two is going to be getting the parents involved and sharing 
what the tool is. So, and I'm totally stealing that from my friend, Corey, who's a project lead the way teacher over in Illinois. <laughs> we did, I, I did the other day. It was kind of fun, but it, man, the policing and I need to figure out somebody else to help. I did a school-wide slideshow and we did silly faces and it was fun. Like we had kindergartners all the way up participating. We have over a hundred slides. I had to shut it down because we had a couple of glitches and um, about 12 o'clock at night, I still had second graders trying to input things. And so I closed it and I told them if they send me one and I've had so many access requests, but I think just the community, like just, mm -hmm. these are littles using it. So imagine if we get them, like this is gonna push them how far they're gonna be for you guys. We're ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also was looking at the times that kids are like logging their attendance and mm -hmm. Just was it two years ago, we moved the school day to start at nine o'clock. But like, according to my data, I think we should start school at like 11 o'clock for high school kids <laughs> and go to about 10 o'clock at night. They just, yeah, which I do our not want. Our elementary is starting about six or seven. Like yeah, I, the night before. I have, um, so I have a school-wide Google Classroom that I set up. So that weekend, you know, that Friday, I had kind of started thinking about it and I set it up over the weekend. I've now, you know, we have over 600 kids in our building. I have over 400 of them in this Google classroom. Awesome. So, and I still, um, you know, cause I posted daily announcements every day. I did the announcements on a video. Um, so I'm still doing a daily announcement, but it's just got like a joke of the day and a weather report telling them when's the best time to get outside and play, oh. um, kind of stuff. And, um, but I also every day put like a would you rather question and how many kids respond to that. And they're on it at like I'll post it at 730 in the morning and immediately within five minutes, I'll have like 15 kids who have answered it. So they are oh, some of these kids are up and ready to go. Right. Uh, I mean, it's blows my mind. Meg, will you talk about your read aloud too? Because I was, I don't know if I told Seth about it or I was just like, Meg's doing really cool stuff. Let's have her on. But I want okay. to talk about your read aloud. So I started the read aloud actually at the beginning of um, the school year. Um, I was actually reading um, D David Shannon book, the Camilla and the Bad Case of Stripes. And I, I love that yeah. book, right? She doesn't want to eat the lima beans because everybody else doesn't like them. She's really just afraid to be who she is. And it's a children's book. It's written for preschool kids. And I was reading it to, um, you know, we still have all those old, old picture books. My daughter's in third grade and it was just, we were reading it and I was like, man, this is like a really big message not just for little kids, but for older kids. So I started to do these read alouds where, so every um, Friday I send them out to the teachers and it's, um, I send them in two ways. So it's just um, kind of the picture of the book. And then it is a, like a YouTube reading of the book. Um, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's just ones I find that are recorded. And then I ask, just ask some questions about the book. Um, just in regards to get the kind of kids thinking more about like the social emotional messages that are kind of coming through and for the teachers to just start conversations with the kids um, about them. So I do them. I did them every Friday. Um, and so last week I just was like, well, let's keep the habit of it. And I sent it out to all my ELA teachers and was like, you know, feel free to use this. I just kind of altered it in regards to where the kids could respond in the Google slides so they could make a copy and the kids could type the answer. Um, and I just did it that way, but then I sent it out to just kind of all the discs because they're, I mean, they're, they're books, they're picture books for preschool kids, but the messages in them are for all ages. Mm -hmm. So I just think that they're just a, you know, and they're just, some of them are just fun little books, you know? They're, they're super cute and uh, the kids enjoy them. Everybody likes being read to. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, so that's like, like, let's keep building on that. So what are some of the best things that you've seen, whether it's a book reading um, by yourself or from someone else, or it's a meme or it's something on social media, what have been some cool things or hilarious things that you guys have seen around? I have a teacher who is, um every video that she makes she is dressed up in a different way just to kind of keep it fresh and then 
they're high schoolers. So, you know, she's like, I don't care if I look corny, like they're going to laugh anyway. And then we can all be goofballs together. So that was kind of my favorite thing is to check in and see her videos and just see like, what is she wearing today? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm going to jump in. Um, two apps that I've been bragging about lately is one is novel effect. Um, oh, yeah just easy on the phone. Um, and it's like, as you read a book, it plays sound effects in the background and it listens to, um, like what you're saying and the speed you're reading. And then it has like keywords that it listens to. And then it plays certain sound effects after those words. It is super fun. And just to kind of go back to Meg saying like, just finding an easy picture book that has a good message. Yeah. A lot of them have good messages. And so then like, even though my kids are quite a bit older like it's so fun to break that out every now and then um and then my other favorite thing is the doodle drawings with mo williams oh, uh, yeah. oh my gosh like after lunch every day like the kids and i yes these are some of ours right <laughs> yeah i've got yeah i think i've got those same drawings in my notebook right here yeah, yeah there's, that's awesome there's, there's mine right yeah, there <laughs> Yeah, it, it makes it so simple. Also, have you seen like the Muffalo potato ones? Everything nope. is made out of letters and numbers. So oh, he draws God. everything, but it's like draw an L. And like every kid knows how to make the letter L, right? Do a number four and it like turns it into these shapes. And you from that, you can draw like Kermit the Frog or Snoopy. And those are, those are really cute also. Um, and just fun. Our, art teacher, our teacher's using those, I think. Yeah, I think I know the art teacher at Kennedy used the the Muffalo potato one. Um, and I saw my daughter doing it the other day and I was like, what? I can draw that. Yeah, <laughs> I can do that. So I think, yeah, I think it's been really neat. All the stuff that has come in from social media and mm -hmm. all the people who are in these really, you know, different and creative roles and the ways in which they are stepping up to help create just so many different types of fun things to participate in, um, you know, and all the the virtual, you know, trips and all of that stuff. It's just so cool. Those know? are my favorite. The Shed Aquarium penguins are literally my life right now. Like, they're so cute. And I just, I love it. I love all the virtual stuff going on. Um, our science teacher has a hedgehog and a bearded dragon. Um, and the kids miss them. So they figure out how to live stream the bearded dragon from home now so the kids can check on Beaker whenever they want. That's um, so cool. Yeah, it's just neat. And I mean, she does a daily Beaker tweet um, for those who don't want to watch him. But like, you just, I just love how everyone's coming together to do the best we can to make what we can of this. So. Yeah. I'm just super thankful that all of the like educational platform, you know, companies have just said like free, everything free because man, I mean, what a, what a great thing to do. So at least we have access to all of that, you know? So I'm going to take a different route. I'm so happy with all the adults that have senses of humor <laughs> on Facebook and Twitter that make me yeah. laugh hysterically. Um, just like when, when somebody said earlier about training with, um, using Google Meets. I love the one where everybody's in a meeting and all of a sudden the lady walks through and I don't think she realizes she hasn't turned off her camera when she goes into the restroom and sets it on the floor. Yes. <laughs> like, oh my God, I didn't just see that. Like hilarious or the Brady Bunch meme where it's like all meetings are going to be like this from now on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just thought so my great. personal favorite are the memes where the teacher, the, well, the parents say, you know, um, this is the second, first thing of e-learning and I already have two students, one's expelled and the other one's, yep. you know, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for a little bit more appreciation to come. <laughs> yeah. I like, like the first day of e-learning and I don't see any pictures like the first day of school, what's going on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but there's a neighborhood dad PTO group that I have texted me a couple of them. And so like I one is like, Homeschool day one, wondering how to get these kids transferred out of my class. Yeah. <laughs> I think the same parent may have called his school off the other day for a snow day. Is that the same parent? <laughs> it it might have been one of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Or who, he said, Don't tell me how to run my class. 
Yeah. <laughs> Charging his kids a dollar to dress down for the day. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah, that, that's Seth right there. <laughs> <laughs> I made two bucks. Two <laughs> the three. You're rich now. <laughs> that's right. Well, at least they can't spend my money. They're all stuck at home, so. <laughs> Although I did see you blow up Everett the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. really like, oh, what is that other superhero app on yeah. uh, the iPad where, yeah, they can blow each other up. Um, yeah, that, that's that been a popular one. So, <laughs> all right. I also like Seth, I have to say the other day you put on Facebook, I don't know if anybody else noticed, he was doing the first day of e-learning and he had a coffee cup, but then yeah. he went over to Twitter, he had the whole you know pot of coffee then he was drinking out of. So, Do you want to go to that further and what? <laughs> how what his third day was? Third day was an entire growler, which yeah. by the way, it, it had the cap on, it's still it's fresh, I haven't cracked it yet. <laughs> But yes. it's from Crooked U, so shout out to Crooked U if they want to sponsor this video or any other videos. We'd be happy to. <laughs> we'll offer the growlers. No. That's right. right. <laughs> All right. So this has been great. And I think we've gone over, I said like 30 minutes and we're, we're looking at a little bit over, which is perfect. Um, thank you, first of all, for being on and taking some time out of your, your busy day. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like you guys mentioned it, going back to being a first year teacher, coming mm -hmm. up with all new content. Then also being home with the kids and teaching them, um, it's it's been a new experience, and um, I'm looking forward to going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, thanks so much, and I guess any last minute uh, quotes or questions you guys want to share with parents, teachers, administrators. Go ahead. We will get through this. We're doing <laughs> great. Keep yeah. laughing and smiling. Yep. Yeah. You are doing great. Yes. Awesome. Be, be willing to forgive yourself. It's like, you know, yeah. you don't, everything doesn't have to be perfect all the time. It's going to be okay. And, you know, it's okay to not make every lesson curriculum based. You know, some lessons can just be for fun. Have a mindful moment, right? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I had some high school students saying, like, I'm just jumping through some busy work. Like, let's not make it busy. Let's make it, like, mindful. Let's make it purposeful. Mm -hmm. Let's make it personal. Um, because I don't know uh, a student that, like, when they say, what was your favorite time in high school or what was your favorite time in school? They say, like, oh, that worksheet. Like, it's <laughs> all about, like, the personal relationships that we build, right? Right. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much. And if anybody wants to contact them, please do so. These are like the rock star teachers that are going to get us through the next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me stop recording.